good morning students so dear students today it is time to start an amazing chapter a chapter of great importance that is light so students how much light is important to us that i need not have to tell you i guess obviously not we all know the importance of light everything everywhere is visible is because of light i am visible to you it is because of light so today we will learn various interesting concepts about light in this chapter but before that can you all tell me from which sources we get light these things you have already got in previous classes yes yes very good so from sun from bulb from tube lights etc so those substances which emit light of their own are known as luminous objects on the other hand those substances which do not emit any light of their own are called non luminous objects for example chair chalk duster etc in order to show that light is necessary in order to see objects let me show you a video by sharing the screen so that you have an idea about how light is necessary in order to see objects so i'm just sharing the screen students you all can check it on your screen yes so here it goes can you see the objects present in this room no because there is no light in the room we can see objects only in the presence of light light makes things visible to us let's study some properties of light so when we talk about properties of light we basically mean that light traveling in a straight line light always travels in a straight line whenever we say the that light is traveling in a straight line we are meaning the rectilinear propagation of light this is one of the property of light in order to showcase the rectilinear propagating property of light let me show you certain activities by which you will get to know how light travels in a straight line take a lit candle so in order to show you the first activity we will require a candle a straight pipe and a band pipe so just have a look students and fix it on a table observe the flame of the candle through a straight pipe we are able to see the flame of the candle now take a bent pipe and observe the flame of the candle through this bent pipe can we see the flame of the candle see in the very first case the pipe which was taken was straight so due to which we were able to see the flame but in the second case it is a band pipe since it is a band pipe so light cannot travel in a zigzag manner so due to which light cannot travel so due to which we are not able to see the candle flame that is why in the first case we were able to see the flame and in the second case it's not possible no this is because light travels in a straight line let's find the path of light now let's do one more activity where it will be showcasing the path of the light that means light is traveling in a straight line we know but how where is the path how the path moves that we will see here by performing an activity observe a laser light we can only see the light hitting on the wall now spread some talcum powder in the path of the light now we are able to see the path of light light travels in a straight line what happens Let's do one more activity in order to show show that light travels in a straight line. And for that, we will require three cardboards and a torch light. So just see. When an object comes in between the path of light, let's find out by performing an activity. 
take three cardboards of equal size. Make a hole in each cardboard at the same place. Align the cardboards in a straight line. Pass a beam of light from a torch through the holes in the cardboard. We can see that light travels in a straight line through the holes. Now displace the middle cardboard from its position. We can see the shadow of the cardboard on the wall. This happened because light forms a shadow of the objects that come in its path. This activity basically shows the rectilinear propagation of light's property. Now, let's see the difference between luminous and non-luminous objects. When we were talking about the difference between luminous and non-luminous objects, we were basically meaning that means emitting of light. That means if any substance is emitting light of its own, then th that's a type of substances is known as luminous objects. And those substances which do not emit any light are known as non-luminous objects. So just have a look with certain examples. You know that objects which emit light of their own are called luminous objects. And those which do not emit light of their own are called non-luminous objects. Observe the following objects and mark them as luminous or non-luminous. So just check it on your screen that whether it is luminous or not. So this is sun. So sun definitely emit its own light. Yes. Okay. So it is luminous. Very good. That's right. The sun is a luminous object as it gives out its own light. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. So this one is moon. This one is moon. So, okay. It's a very good. That's right. The moon is a non-luminous object as it does not give out light of its own. Let's move on to the next example. Okay, it's a star. Okay, so it is a luminous object. That's right. A star is a luminous object as it gives out its own light. Let's move on to the next example. So it's a chair. Okay, so it does not emit any light. So this is an example of very good. That's right. A chair is a non-luminous object as it does not give out light of its own. Now, we know which objects are luminous and which objects are non-luminous. Now, when we talk about the next part in this chapter, we need to know about three different types of substances. The first one is transparent, translucent and opaque substances. When we need to know about transparent objects, those are substances which passes light through them, which allows light to pass through it, that means. But when we talk about translucent object, they allows only partial light to pass through it. And when we talk about opaque substances, they do not allow any light to pass through it. So in this video, we will see the examples of different types of substances. transparent, translucent, and opaque materials. When you look through a clear window, you can see objects on the other side. But you... So in this case, see, it is allowing maximum light to pass through it. So this is an example of transparent, translucent, or opaque. Very good. It's an example of transparent material. You cannot see through a wall surrounding the window. The glass in the window is what we refer to as transparent material. Transparent materials are clear and allow light to pass directly through them. If we focus a red light on a transparent drinking glass, the light coming out from the other side will also be red. Similarly, if we use a green light, green light will emerge from the other side. Air and water are also transparent. Frosted glass, tracing paper, 
and tissue paper are not as clear as the glass. When light strikes tracing paper, only some of the light will pass through. Now just tell me, this is an example of which type of substance, since it is allowing only little light to pass through it. Okay, so this is an example of translucent substances, as it is allowing partial light to pass through it. Very good. While some will be scattered, this material is translucent. If we are able to look through translucent material, such as colored or etched glass, objects on the other side will appear fuzzy. Wood, stone, and metal are all materials we would describe as opaque, meaning they prevent any passage of light. Summary Transparent materials allow light to so transparent materials are the materials that allow light to pass through in. When we talk about translucent material, it is allowing partial light to pass through it. And when we talk about opaque ob objects that do not allow any light to pass through it, we have seen different examples of all the substances. Now let's move on to the next part that is very, very important, which is reflection. What is reflection? Reflection is all about bouncing back of light. Bouncing back of light is nothing but called reflection. In this topic, we will learn different types of terms like incident ray, reflected ray, normal, angle of incidence, angle of reflection. When we talk about angle of incidence or angle of reflection, but before that, we need to know incident ray. What is incident ray? We know what are luminous substances, what is a source. So, when a ray of light is coming from the source and striking the surface, then that is called incident ray. When a ray of light is bouncing back from the surface, then it is called reflected ray. Normal is the imaginary line which is perpendicular to the surface. That is what is called normal. Now, when we talk about angle of incidence, it is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. And when we talk about the reflected ray, it is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. So, these things combine together to form the laws of reflection. So let's see what these laws of reflection are and what are these terms. Laws of reflection. Why do mirrors have a silver coating on one side of the glass? So can anyone tell me why mirrors are having a silvery coating in one of its side? As we have seen that transparent materials does not like it allows light to pass through it. No reflection is there. So due to which in this case, whenever we are having a silvery coating in one side, it allows the light to get reflected to its maximum. Okay. This is only the reason why one end of the mirror is colored with silver or silvery coating is given. It is because highly polished metal surfaces reflect light when it is incident on them. So now let's see the reflection, the laws of reflection and what it is all about. Laws of reflection, for knowing the laws of reflection, you need to know the terms which I told you. Law of Entry, reflection. Reflected ray, normal. Angle of incidence. Light rays bounce off shiny surfaces, such as that of a mirror, in a phenomenon known as reflection. Plane mirrors, named as such because of their flat surfaces or plane, have distinct ways of reflection. The ray approaching the mirror is known as the incident ray. And the ray bouncing off is known as the reflected ray. This is what is called when calculating ray. angles related to reflection. It is customary to measure the angles from an imaginary line, and this is which lies perpendicular normal. to the plane of the reflecting surface and is known as the normal. The law of reflection states that the angle of incident light is equal to the angle of reflection. Now, what are these angle of incident? If we were to place a lighted candle in front of a plane mirror, Infinite rays of light would be reflected in all directions. After striking the mirror, the rays will reflect at angles equal to their angles of incidence. 
In this case, the incident ray forms an angle of incidence or theta i and the reflected ray creates an angle of reflection or theta r. In so in this case, angle of incidence is denoted by theta i and angle of reflection is denoted by theta r. So the law of reflection tells us that the incident ray, the normal and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane and at the point of incidence. This is the first law of reflection. And the second law tells us that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. That means theta i will be equals to theta r. Relation to the normal. According to the law of reflection, theta i is equal to theta r. In mirrors, the incident ray, the normal, and the reflected ray all lay on the same plane. This law applies not only to plane reflective surfaces, but also to convex and concave reflective surfaces. So next, let's do an activity here. <coughs> so this is an observer and the source is somewhere here. The source is not been shown. So this ray, what this ray is called, just check it out. Is it incident ray? Excellent. Very good. Now the bouncing back of the the bouncing back of light from the from the surface to the observer. This type of ray is called one. This one. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Now the imaginary line which is perpendicular to the surface is called what? Normal. Okay. Let me bring it here. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Now what is the angle between the incident tree and the normal? Angle of incidence. Excellent. Okay, very good. And what is the angle between the reflected Try and again. normal? This is called angle of Excellent. reflection. Very good. Now let's move on to the worksheet where we will discuss 13 questions. Okay, now see. Reflection from a smooth surface. See. Till now, we have not discussed what is a smooth surface and rough surface, but reflection is only possible through a smooth surface. And there are two types of reflection, regular reflection and irregular reflection. When we talk about regular reflection, it means that when the incident rays are parallel to each other, the reflected rays are also parallel to each other. But in case of irregular reflection, the incident rays are parallel to each other, but the reflected rays are not parallel to each other. We will discuss this in the coming classes. So in this case, reflection from a smooth surface is what? It is regular reflection. Very good. Very good. Now let's move on to the next question. Regular reflection of light would be exhibited by, that means where can you see regular reflection? Glass mirror, okay, let me check. Very good. Let's move on to the next one. The light ray which strikes a surface, that means it is striking a surface, is called dash ray. The ray that comes back from the surface after reflection is called the dash ray. So what this is about? This we these things we have got in the laws of reflection part. So the light ray which strikes a surface is called the incident ray, and the ray that comes back from the surface after reflection is called the reflected ray. Next one, a smooth shining surface rebounding the light back in the same or different direction is called. Okay, just see the options. So it is going to be mirror. Very good. Now the next one, state whether the following statement is true or false. So the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of reflection for a light ray incident on a curved mirror. Here it is telling that angle of incidence is greater, but from the law of reflection, what we have got? That angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. So this statement is false. Very good. So we have solved some of the questions 
and you all have understood. So let's move on to the next part. Next part, we will learn about the characteristics of a plane mirror. So what are the characteristics of a plane mirror all about? Characteristics of a plane mirror, there are various characteristics how images are formed on a plane mirror. Okay, so for this, we need to know certain new terms like lateral inversion, virtual, erect, all these are certain words which we are going to use it now. Now see, what are the characteristics of mirror? What characteristics of mirror tells us? Characteristics of mirror basically tells us that so it basically tells us it basically tells us about how the reflection takes place in a plane mirror so just have a look how it takes place so i'm just i'm just sharing the screen you can see on your screen that a candle is placed in front of the plane mirror image formation in plane mirrors a mirror is a polished surface that reflects light waves. A plane mirror is flat, like a geometric plane. When a ray of light strikes a plane mirror, the direction is changed so that the ray passes back in the direction from which it originated. If we draw an imaginary line, referred to as the normal, which runs perpendicular to the plane mirror, the angle created between the incoming ray and the normal will be the angle of incidence. This thing's the angle created between this. the reflected ray and the normal is the angle of reflection. The law of reflection states that the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection. When we tilt the mirror at an angle theta, the reflected ray will rotate through an angle of 2 theta. If we place a lighted candle in front of a mirror at a distance of x, we will see an image of the candle at a distance of x. So this is the first property of plane mirror which tells us that the distance between the object and the mirror will be equal to the distance between the image and the mirror. The object distance and image distance are always going to be the same. Once you are moving towards the mirror, the image will also move towards the mirror. So this is the first property of plane mirror. Seemingly behind the mirror. Images virtual will be upright and cannot be captured on screen. Let's look at the mechanism of the image's formation. The rays from the candle will strike the mirror's surface at different angles and be reflected. If we projected the reflected rays behind the mirror, they would converge at a point, forming a virtual image. So what is the meaning of the word virtual? Virtual images means they cannot be formed on a screen. Okay. Since they cannot be formed on a screen, that is the second property of plane mirror is that it forms virtual image. The distance between the virtual image and the mirror will be the same as that of the distance between the object and the mirror. Although it is upright, an image in the plane mirror will be laterally inverted. Third property of plane mirror is that the image that is going to be formed is always upright. If you are standing in front of a mirror, the image of the mirror will also be the same. That means the head up, toe down, same way. So this is what is called. Now, when we talk about the next property that is lateral inversion. To check this, let's hold the word ambulance in front of a mirror. The word will appear reversed. So this thing we can easily understand like in front of a plane mirror if you are putting your right hand you can see your left hand in the uh, as an image in the plane mirror. So this is what is called lateral inversion. The right hand part appears to be in the left and the left side appears to be in the right. So where it is useful in writing ambulance in vehicle. It is for this reason the word is reversed when painted on the front of emergency vehicles. 
it can be read correctly in the rear view mirror. A plain mirror will produce an image that is virtual, upright, and the same size as the original object. It will also appear at the same distance as the object is from the mirror, but it will be laterally inverted. So these are the summary properties of a mirror, mirror is a polished surface that reflects light waves. A plane mirror is flat, like a geometric plane. A plane mirror. Now let's move on to the exercise part. So define lateral inversion. Easily you can define it. What is it all about? Whenever the right hand side appears to be in the left hand side in the mirror, then this property of plane mirror is known as lateral inversion. Now draw the ray diagram for the image of an object formed by a plane mirror. Easily you can do it. Let's discuss. So what type of image is formed on a cinema screen? Do you all know? So this thing it is going to be your homework. You will see whether it forms a virtual image and real image means which can be taken on a screen. Okay. So how do we see an object? By what mechanism things are visible to us? Things are visible to us with the mechanism of light. Without light, we cannot see anything. So now I'm going to show you like two terms we have got while discussing the MCQs. We have got two things. The first thing is the regular reflection and the second one is irregular reflection. So what this is all about? What is the difference between regular and irregular reflection? Okay. So for that, let me share the screen and take out the whiteboard. You'll just check. It. Now see. What is the difference between regular and irregular reflection is what I told you during that time that if all the incident rays are parallel to each other, like if I draw a surface here, if I draw a surface and say this is the incident ray, this one is the incident ray, I'm drawing one more incident ray. See, these two incident rays are parallel to each other. If I draw a reflected ray, say this is the reflected ray, I'm drawing one more reflected ray. You can see that the incident rays, both the incident rays are parallel to each other and the reflected rays are also parallel to each other. So this type of images for image formation is said to be as regular reflection. And it is possible only in case of a smooth surface like Still water surface, shiny metals, glass, mirror. So these are examples for regular reflection. Now, when we talk about irregular reflection, irregular reflection means whenever, say, I'm drawing a surface one more time, and then I'm drawing again two parallel incident rays. These two rays are parallel. But when we talk about the reflected rays, the reflected rays are not at all parallel to each other. You can see that the reflected rays, the incident rays are parallel to each other, but reflected rays are not parallel to each other. So this type of reflection is said to be as diffused reflection or irregular reflection. So what is the difference between regular reflection and irregular or diffused reflection? Regular reflection means when the incident rays are parallel to each other, the reflected rays are also parallel to each other. But when we talk about the diffused reflection, when the incident rays are parallel to each other, the reflected rays are not parallel to each other. So in case of a regular reflection, smooth surfaces over smooth surfaces, it is possible. And in case of diffused reflection over rough surfaces, it is possible. Now, when we talk about the examples of regular reflection, obviously a clear image will be formed like on uh, in a mirror, it can be in a polished surface, but when we talk about re diffuse reflection, images will not be formed. And due to which the surface can be a wooden surface, it can be a cloth, it can be paper. So these are the examples for diffuse reflection. So there are various terms. Okay, this is, uh, F is missing out here. So here see, in this case, basically, we have seen various new things. 
and we will learn various more things in our coming classes okay so hope you all have understood whatever things were shown to you today you could relate with the day to day life problems or day to day life things isn't it okay so with this itself i am just concluding the class out here okay and remember to read the chapter once more so that in the next class when i'll ask you certain more questions today question session was there but more further questions if i ask you in the next class then you must be able to every one must be able to answer it is it okay okay so with this itself i'm just concluding the class out here thank you everyone